Hello, it's Margarita. Welcome, welcome to the Rise Up with Margarita show. It is my Monday weekly show at 2 p.m. Eastern. And in this Rise Up show, I have tools and tips and tricks. And also, it's super important to engage with your power when you are a light worker who is a spiritually conscious entrepreneur and really showing up in the world and making a difference in the world and looking to make an impact in the world, right? So I am here to help you rise up into that work, into what's next for you. And every week it's a different topic. So today's topic is here's why you feel stuck as a light worker on your spiritual path. So this is like you know, I knew this was going to be a super juicy topic because a lot of light workers love to talk about, oh, I'm so stuck. I, I'm so stagnant. I feel blocked, right? Like they, they say that a lot. And at the same time, there's something going on there, right? And, and something that is really juicy to explore. And that's why I wanted to explore that with you today and really have a discussion on this because this is super important. Um, because if you're stuck, if you're feeling stuck, ever at, at all right in your life then you know here's the thing the way you do one thing in life is how you do everything in life and it's going to affect everything in your life so and that comes to you know when it comes to power also it's going to show up it's going to show up in all aspects so what i mean by that is you know when i talk about you know are you in your power are you connected to your power a lot of people i would say the majority of people would say yes however they're connecting that more with a feeling like maybe they had a good day or like maybe i'm feeling maybe i'm feeling good today maybe i had enough rest i'm feeling like i'm in my power right or maybe they had some kind of you know epiphany download you know and they're like now i'm in my power right and the reality is that being in your power takes a lot more than just having a good day it takes a lot more than just feeling good in a given moment it's about what is the body of work you're creating in your life, right? Like, and I'm not just talking about business, because I mean, of course, that too, because it's all connected. But, you know, what are you creating in the world? You know, how are you feeling about yourself? What are you putting out in the world? What is your vibration, right? Like, it's a vibration, a frequency you carry. And, you know, this is something that I work with a lot because I, I activate the new code of power in others. You know, it's like it's a dormant, you know, everyone has, you know, power especially in their DNA, um, at the DNA level, and it's very much connected to their divinity. Um, and just like to briefly share, um, you know, we all have divine DNA, all of us, and we've been taught otherwise. Um, and basically what we've been taught is we've got two strands of DNA and they look like this and they just swirl around each other and that's all we, all you got right? But the reality is we've got like 12 strands, 24 strands, you know, I mean, we've got a, a big number of strands, okay? And, um, but that's just not talked about. And it's been labeled as junk DNA, because um, they don't know what to do with it. <laughs> like, to be honest, they don't know what to, they don't know what to make of it. Um, but those what is called and labeled as a junk DNA is actually connected to our divine, our divine selves. And so a lot of times that is actually dormant, not because we desire it to be dormant, because of course we don't, right? But um, it's been kind of programmed that way for many reasons. Um, and, you know, some of it, you know, light, some mostly not, you know, because um, anything holding you back from your power is not, right? So I wanted to share that with you because it's more than just having a good day, being in your power. It is more than just having like, you know, talking to, you know, Archangel Michael, you know, and hopefully you're really talking to Archangel Michael, if you know what I mean, because there's a lot of light workers who also, um, you know, think they're talking to think to beings of light, but they're not really um, because they're not connected to their power. They're not connected to their heart. And then they start getting all kinds of other intel that is not necessarily of light, you know, and that's super important to know. And when you're in your power, you already are connected to the truth of your divinity and you're expressing that in the world, right? So um, that's super important to, to learn and, and know about yourself. And so it's going to show up in other aspects of your life when you're in your power, when you're connected to your power, right? It's going to look like 
probably um, your relationships are super satisfying, you know, um, romantically, platonically, uh, you know, maybe even with your colleagues, you know, business relationships even, right? Um, it'll also look like you're really expanding in your business, um, whether it is your day job or, you know, you're an entrepreneur and you work for yourself and, you know, you've got your own business. Um, it can also look like you're making the kind of money that you want to be making. And um, it's super important to be connected to, to all of those aspects, right? So it's, and it's not even just those things that I'm just mentioning. Those are just kind of like the things that are coming off the tip of my tongue right now, but it's really in everything, every aspect of your life. You're gonna feel super aligned, super connected. You're getting the results that you want. You're feeling super happy about it. You're in, the, in this expansive state um, and you're creating from that higher alignment within yourself. That's what being in your power is about, right? And then, yeah, sure, you know, if you're really connected to yourself, and really connected to your divinity within yourself, then you are going to be, you know, connecting on those higher frequency levels, you know, and again, make sure that's really super clear because a lot of, you know, light workers are just really, you know, not connected with, with that. Um, so that's super important to have your energy clear. And that's what being in your power is really about too, is really cultivating that, knowing what the difference is. And I'm just also going to, put it as a caveat here because I'm seeing some questions pop in. I'm only going to answer questions that are connected to the topic at hand um, just to keep things on track. So the topic just to remind folks is here's why you feel stuck as a light worker on your spiritual path. And so here's why light workers are feeling stuck on their spiritual path. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover that. I'm also going to share why this is coming up for many light workers right now. Also what's actually happening and what you need to transform it. So, you know, and, and, um, and the choice will be yours if you decide to move through with that or not, you know, we're sovereign beings and that means we get to make sovereign choices. So, why light workers are feeling stuck on their spiritual path right now is that they are stopping themselves from stepping forward in their path like they're literally just stopping themselves and they may be aware of it they may not be um but you know but that's what they're doing they're 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 actually stopping themselves in their journey they're actually saying i'm not moving like for whatever reason i'm not moving forward i'm not okay with this uh, most usually it's they're letting their fear stop them, right? And, you know, if you're not where you want to be, you're probably stuck. And if you're not moving, if you're frustrated with yourself, you're probably stuck. And one of the reasons, the main reasons why light workers allow themselves to get stuck is because they're afraid of something and they're not moving forward about it. And they're not dealing with it either, right? So that's super important to know is that, you know, um, if that's the case, if this resonates for you at all, make sure that you're starting to get curious about yourself and what you're creating in the world, because that'll be super, super important. So why do light workers stop and stay in their stuckness? Usually it is because of fear. Like whatever it is, it usually comes down to fear. And if you're saying, oh no, I'm not stuck, I'm fine right? Well, then ask yourself, are you exactly where you want to be right now? And of course, you're going to be, you know, even when you're in your power, you're going to be in the state of being expansive and always growing, right? So that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, are you even attaining what you are setting out to get? And if the answer is no, then you are stopping yourself somewhere. And um, so it's usually to just due to some form of fear, and I'll share what that could look like, right? It's either fear of your power, which is a big one, especially for women light workers. Um, usually it's they've misused it before, they were irresponsible with it before, whether in this lifetime, previous lifetimes. Um, sometimes there's also a fear of being visible uh, because, you know, if you're in your power, really, really connected to yourself, you're going to want to share that and really impact the world, right? And um, when you go out and you impact the world, especially meaning like you're not just staying local and you're just helping the handful of people you can like right here. And believe me, I get it. I'm in New York City. There are a lot of people here, right? And, you know, at first I thought, okay, good. 
like you know but um at the same time that's not where i was called to stay and so um there's usually also the sphere of visibility and that too can stem from some things you've learned either in this lifetime, the way you were conditioned, um, the way you believe things, and um, it also could be from past lives. So that's super important. And you know, if any of that sounds like that might resonate at all, then your next step is to really get curious about these things, right? And really kind of see within yourself, like what is what's coming up for you about these things, even just sharing it, like, right, you know, I'm talking about these things, what's coming up for you right now about it? Like, are you suddenly getting defensive, which would then indicate that there's something there to explore? Um, Because whenever we get defense, super defensive, or super triggered, um, there's something there uh, to explore, because there's usually something that's unhealed, right? So, um, you know, just pay attention to your reaction within yourself right now, as we're talking about this. There uh, is also a fear of discomfort, you know, like it's just, it's not fun to be not feeling comfortable about what you're doing, you know, how you're feeling, right? Um, And if you are growing, you are going to be uncomfortable uh, because, you know, growth takes expansion. And um, if you're truly in expansion and you truly are cultivating expansion in your life, then you're going to be feeling uncomfortable about, you know, not uncomfortable because you're in pain of your stagnation. I'm talking about the discomfort of growth, the discomfort of I've never done that before. What does that look like? What does that mean for me? What what could happen if I do that, right? That's the discomfort of growth. The discomfort of being stuck is just like you're stuck and nothing shifts, nothing changes, you're in pain and nothing changes, right? That's the difference. And so I'm talking about the fear of discomfort of growth. And, um, and that will, that, that actually blocks a lot of light workers. Cause as you may have seen from one of my, my posts, I did a reel on this, uh, recently where I talked about how light workers, you know, those who wor- have a high light quotient, they work with light, they work with energy, they move energy, they move light, um, they use it to impact the world, to help others in big ways. And if you're a spiritually conscious entrepreneur, you're actually providing your services, right? Um, so usually light workers, uh, you know, they are, they, they, get really caught up in everything needing to feel good, right? And everything needing to feel good in order to be of light. In like so in other words, a lot of light workers will take anything that doesn't feel comfortable, will take anything that doesn't feel good as like, oh, that's a sign from my guides, I need to stop, or it's not for me, or this is a sign from the universe telling me this is not for me, right? And that's not what it is you're literally bumping up against an obstacle because what it takes for you to transcend this obstacle will be what gets you into your next level. And if your criteria is everything needs to feel good, point blank, you're not going to grow. You just won't, right? That's not how it works. <laughs> you know, it's like growth is uncomfortable, you know, and, and um, you know, a lot of people, especially if you're new on the spiritual path, they think, oh, well, what happened? It's supposed to be tulips and rainbows all the time, right? And it's not. That's not what spirit being spiritual is about. And that should not be your, your goal either, right? Like your goal isn't to just have the, um, the uh, rainbows and, and tulips all, all day, 24 seven, right? And definitely you can have that. And that's not all it is. Um, Cause it's also the ugly crying. It's like the snot coming out of your nose. It's like all of the stuff that is uncomfortable, that maybe even is embarrassing a little bit. Um, but you, you know, the difference between an invisible light worker and an empowered light worker is that the invisible light worker will let that keep them stuck. All these fears I just told you about, including the fear of judgment, which I didn't mention, but is also huge for a lot of light workers and is connected to their fear of visibility right? So the fear of their power, the fear of discomfort, the fear of being visible, the fear of judgment, right? What do you think it takes to actually, you know, transcend that? Well, first of all, yes, a lot of, you know, internal work, and then actually taking action. And that's what the empowered light workers do, right? The empowered light workers will feel all of that. 
They'll do the internal work. And then at the end of the day, they're going to do the damn thing, right? They're going to do the damn thing. And they're go that means they're going to show up even though their knees are shaking. Like maybe they're even clapping together because they're so nervous, right? But they're going to do the damn thing. And they're going to say, okay, it's my time. I'm going to make it happen. You know, they're the ones who are also going to, you know, get mentors and coaches to help them accelerate, right? So anyway, so that's why they stop. They stop due to fear and for those levels of fear, those reasons of fear, those types of fears. And um, because the reality is that all stuckness is rooted in fear. It's in, I'm afraid this may happen. What if this happens? I want to avoid this pain. But here's the thing is that you're keeping yourself in pain if you allow yourself to remain stuck. And me personally, I wouldn't like to see you there, right? I would love to see you like, like full on supernova mode, right? But um, that also takes work. That takes work. And um, it means being willing to explore your fears and to transcend them. And, you know, the reality is that you may be in pain by being, in stu by being stuck, um, but it is more painful to stay there and instead of move, right? Because, yes, you know, you may be super uncomfortable if you start growing, right? And just to give you an analogy, you know, as many of you know, I'm a licensed acupuncturist, a Reiki master teacher, a medicine woman, as well as an activator for the new code of power. And one thing that happens when I work on pain management stuff in my private practice, with acupuncture especially, is that especially if something's been hanging out there, like a frozen shoulder, for instance, right? And something has been chronic for a while. And let's say someone has frozen shoulder, which means that it's been like that for a while, right? So whether it be a, a couple months um, or a couple years, right? It's stagnant, it's stagnant energy. And um, in Chinese medicine, it's all about the movement and the flow of qi, right? And if it's stagnant qi, that causes pain. I mean, that's like one of the axioms of Chinese medicine. So when you actually start moving the energy in that frozen shoulder, for instance, it's going to hurt like a mofo, okay? I'll just tell you that for sure because I worked through that myself. It hurts like a bitch, right? And it's painful. And But then that's, that's the chi moving. That is the chi moving. You're breaking up the stagnation. You're breaking up the stagnation. And when you break up the stagnation and the chi starts moving for the first time in like years or months, um, that's going to hurt like a bitch. It just is, you know, and but it, but if you're committed to being more in more mobility, I'll just say like talking about the frozen shoulder, if you're if you want to be in more mobility in your shoulder and you're tired of like, let's say like every time you you um, carry your your newborn like that, it starts getting aggravated. And if you want to change that, then the impetus is to is to heal. And you're, you're going to be willing to do whatever it takes to heal that frozen shoulder so that you can get that mobility, that range of motion, so that you can raise your hand all the way up and you can, like, you know, adduct, abduct, and all this other stuff, right? Your muscles. So that's the same thing with energy. I mean, it's all energy anyway, right? Because, I mean, even chi is energy. Um, and so my point of sharing this story with you is that it's the same thing with getting that chi moving, getting unstuck is that as you start to get unstuck, it's going to be like, oh my God, then you're going to start seeing, oh my God, I created this in my life. I created that in my life. And it's going to be super painful to see that, right? But if you're committed, you will move through it. You will keep going. Um, and so here's the results. Here are some consequences of staying in stuckness. You're going to be stuck in your relationships. Maybe you've hit like, you know, a head point there with um, a partner. Maybe you're even thinking about getting divorced or separating or something like that. Or maybe you're not with somebody and you want to be with somebody, you know, because not everyone wants to be with somebody, you know. Um, but if you want to be and you're not, there's something going on there. Um, also, it can look like being broke, struggling to pay your bills, right? Because if you're really not stuck, then you should be able to pay your bills, right? And that's not even an issue for you. Um, another thing that may happen when you're stuck, 
um, you don't embody your light worker purpose, which is like, you know, kind of a big deal. Cause I mean, if you're a light worker, I mean, you're called your higher self is literally calling you forward to, um, embody your big purpose. And so, um, yeah, that'll happen, right? Like you won't embody your purpose for whatever reason. Um, and usually it'll be one of the forms of fear that I shared earlier. And you'll also feel stuckness in all aspects of your life. And so you might even experience that as physical stuckness. Because usually that's what happens when you don't take care of the energy aspect of it is that it comes closer and closer and closer until it becomes a physical manifestation if you're not paying attention to all the things you get to shift and, you know, all the warning signs that you're getting, right? And if you're not paying attention, then it's going to eventually become a physical manifestation. And I see that all the time in my private practice, you know. Um, so super important to realize that. And here's why it's coming up for many light workers right now. So huge amounts of sun codes coming in. Um, if you haven't been feeling it, uh, the sun codes have been streaming in like nobody's business, like on and on and on. And this is for us, okay? This is to upgrade us on a cellular divine level, okay? And so it's happening for you, not at you, which, you know, and that's also another difference between an invisible light worker and an empowered one, is that the invisible light worker is going to be like, the universe is doing this to me. Like, it's all happening at me. It's coming at me. You know, they're, they're all in the victimhood of things. Whereas the empowered light worker is all like, it's all happening for me. Like, even if they're not liking it, even though it's it may not be enjoyable, right? Like, they, the empowered light worker will be like, I know this is for me. I know this is nourishing me on some level. I may not get it yet at this very moment, but I know that that's the case, right? And so these sun codes, um, so here's the thing. We already reached solar maximum, which happens every eight years. And usually after the solar maximum, uh, you know, the sun just kind of chills out for a little bit, right? But the sun, we've already reached the solar maximum. The sun has not chilled out, okay? So, um, and this is something I know because my beloved, he, he does a lot of research. I'll just keep it at that. And um, there's a lot of activity going on in the sun. And it's a lot of it has to do with us in as a human consciousness as a human collective um rising in consciousness you know some of us rising in consciousness but i mean on some level there's a consciousness shift happening you know um even for people who aren't doing the work right like there's some awareness going on and we're having this ascension experience as a collective right so um so what's going to happen is that it's going to like for those who are doing the work you know we're all like oh my god that's amazing or you know that kind of thing um for those who are not or who are fighting themselves or who are in stuckness um or even those who are not doing the work right they're going to have a tougher time because they're not allowing that shift to happen within them in order to receive it optimally i mean it'll still happen right but if you're fighting yourself already then that's going to be super hard to integrate all these higher frequencies. Um, but even if you are integrating all the higher frequencies, it will kind of feel um, like you're clearing a lot of things out. Um, you might feel kind of the emotions of stuff surfacing because you're clearing them out. Um, you might have some sleep disruptions. Usually for me and Stacy, my, my beloved, um, that's usually how it shows up for us. And so, yeah, that's that's how that might happen. Um, also, cosmic rays are streaming in. So it's not just the sun. We're getting actually a lot of cosmic waves. Um, and if you know how to work with plasma waves, um, that's something I bring into uh, a lot of my activations, um, you know, these plasma healing waves. You can actually heal your body. It's super important to do that. And also the frequencies are rising, just in general. Like all of these energies we're working with, excuse me, you know, it's, um, they're rising and, um, it's honestly going to spin some people out. If you're doing the inner work, it's not going to do that for you. It's not going to spin you out. You're just going to be in integration mode and maybe you'll be tweaking things here and there, you know? Um, but for those who are not, it's, it's going to spin them out a little bit. And so you're going to notice a lot of that. And this is one of the reasons why I'm super determined and focused on really serving light workers who are empowered and who are spiritually conscious entrepreneurs because it is time to 
help to do our thing, basically, you know, to do our thing, to serve, um, to provide our offers or services, you know, and, and that's super important to do right now. I mean, cause it's just honestly, what is our, what is our excuse for not embodying our purpose, right? Fear, you know, you can eat that for breakfast. <laughs> you can eat it for breakfast people, right? So, um, you know, so it's going to cause a reaction like all these higher frequencies, they're going to cause a reaction um, in light workers on, on whatever level, wherever you're at in on the spectrum of, you know, embodying your power and your purpose. So we're all feeling it. And, um, and that's why it's coming up now is because a lot of this stuff, this, whether it's old, whether it's ancient, even um, whether it's something that's always been there that you've just been avoiding and suppressing. I mean, all the shit is coming up to get healed if you allow it, and if you fight yourself, you're going to get stuck. Hence the title of today's topic, right? So what's actually happening here is that you're being invited to step into a higher version of yourself and you'll be forced to make a decision. Like, I mean, and here's the thing is you can either choose to make a decision or, or you're going to be forced to make a decision. <laughs> and believe me, I, I um, highly recommend choosing to make the decisions and choices and the shifts on your own versus the universe being like, you know, hitting you upside on the head a little bit and being like, wake up, <laughs> you know, because I mean, that, that way of shifting, it's, it's more severe and dramatic and harsh. And it's still going to result in the same amazingness, you know, that you're meant for. Um, but it's not going to be as like, oh, that was lovely, <laughs> right? It's going to be like, damn, okay, I got it. I got it, right? So my recommendation, don't wait until your pain is too great to the point that you're losing people you love, you're, you know, in bankruptcy, you're um, not making any money, you're not serving any clients as an entrepreneur, um, you know, like things are suffering in your life. Uh, that you're energetically losing a limb. Do not wait for that moment, okay? Um, so, so most of these questions I'm going to answer closer to the end. So that's my recommendation is to um, hold those questions until I'm like, okay, I'm done with my spiel, <laughs> right? And then you can just like come at, come at me with your questions. But I do see one here that is uh, really relevant. What happens when you feel it but your mind says no. So when that happens, you're, you are in autopilot. You are in survival mode. If you are still functioning from, you know, I need to logically think this through. I need this to be reasonable. I need this to make sense, right? Then you're stuck in your head and you're stuck in the reptilian brain. You're stuck in the survival mode. You're stuck in the, there's not enough. I'm in scarcity, you know, like that kind of energy, right? Um, so you need to really shift it and really cultivate a deeper connection with your heart. Cause if your brain, you know, your logic, if your logical brain is taking over and even though you're like in, internally, you're like, yeah, I want to do this. Um, but then, you know, your mind is like, oh, hell no. Then, and, and then that's what you're following. Then you are allowing your ego to drive the car. Okay, and what you need to do is have it go into the passenger seat and then you get behind the wheel and then you're the one who's driving, which looks like getting connected to your heart and really leading from the heart. Because if you're leading from here, you're not leading from here. And yes, there is a way to connect with your higher consciousness and your heart intelligence. Um, and that's a little bit more advanced, but it's um, doable. But if you're only functioning from here, it's going to look like the, I got to survive. You know, there's only enough for that I can get. There's only enough for everyone, right? That's the mentality of scarcity. And so that's also survival mode, right? Like if I don't do this, I won't survive. If I don't do this, I will not be supported by the universe, right? So that's actually what's really going on around that. So I hope that helped. And um, you're welcome. You're welcome. So here's what you need to transform that stuckness into liberation, right? Freedom, personal freedom, because you get to be in your sovereignty, 
like on all levels, on all levels, whatever it is that feeds your soul, you know, raises your frequency, makes you joyous, be this like, you know, love dove, you know, like, I mean, anything that raises that and cultivates that within your soul and nourishes you deeply, that's what you get to like focus on, right? Like that's what you get to focus on. That's what you also get to have. And that also looks like freedom on all levels. So what you need, first of all, is you need to be willing, you need to be willing to, to go there. You need to be willing to get unstuck. If you're not willing to get unstuck, then, you know, then I can't help you, right? <laughs> because if you're not willing, then you're going to stay there because you're going to keep choosing to stay stuck because it, it is a choice, you know, and you're, if you are stuck, it is a choice. You're choosing to stay stuck. And, you know, that's fine. You know, I mean, that happens in life. And, and then you use that to transcend whatever the obstacle is and expand. And that's your job, right? So you get to be willing, number one. And then number two, you get to be brave and courageous to make a decision that's aligned for your destiny, even if it scares the shit out of you. Like, honestly, like, that's really, that's really the second, the second piece. You know, piece number one, you need to be willing to get unstuck, to choose to no longer be stuck, number one. And then number two, be courageous enough. Be courageous and brave enough to move through with it, move forward with it, take those steps, right? And get unstuck, like be willing to be brave and courageous and to do whatever it takes to get unstuck and, and really commit to that. Then, you get to sit in your discomfort. This is a super sexy part of being in your ascension, okay, that, you know, not a lot of people share because it's not as sexy, okay, to sit in your discomfort. <laughs> it's just not. It's, it's, it's a pain in the ass, you know. Um, but, you know, if you are truly willing, if you're truly committed to no longer being stuck, to getting out of your pain, to getting out of your own way, you'll do it, right? And no one can choose to do that but you. You know, no, even if you hire a coach, if you're not willing, nothing will change, right? So you, so that's why I only work with, with those types of clients who are super aligned and they're, you know, open to their transformation because that's super important to, you know, in order to receive the change that you want, you need to be willing to move forward with it, to be brave enough to commit to it, and then to also be brave enough to sit in your discomfort. And what I mean by that is, you know, when you actually start clearing all this stuff, you're going to start realizing some things that you're going to find embarrassing about yourself. Maybe you might even feel shame about it or guilt, right? Um, totally normal, okay? Like, first of all, totally normal to feel all those things. If you're feeling any of those things, when those things come up and uh, sitting with it and being like, oh, Okay, so when that shame and guilt is coming up, it's coming up, it's, it, I'm feeling it in my solar plexus, or I'm feeling it in my heart, or you're feeling it somewhere, right? Guaranteed you're feeling it somewhere. So it's super important to notice that, you know, what's coming up for you as you sit in the discomfort of whatever it is the stuckness is really about. And, um, and then be willing to shift it, right? And then commit to that decision to see it through. Meaning that as you start getting curious about it and you really dig deep about what your stuckness really is about, what you really are trying to suppress, um, what you're really trying to hold down, because for a lot of light workers, it's not that something is truly, truly off. Usually it's um, you're dimming your own light to appease others on some level, right? And so you need to stop that shit. <laughs> You just do. And, um, you know, because, I mean, if you if you keep going, you're going to keep staying in the same place. And, you know, that ain't living, right? That, they, that ain't living. That's not the way, that's not what you incarnated on this planet to experience, right? And then here is the kicker of what you get to do to transform the stuckness. You know, because I, I, I already spoke about, like, you know, some of the initial steps. But the most important one is 
to make that decision, right? Like, I mean, there was some commitment that I mentioned before, so that was already a decision, but really committing to your decision to keep choosing your expansion, to keep choosing your destiny, to keep going until you make that breakthrough. And, you know, FYI, spoiler alert, um, you're going to have more than one breakthrough. If you're doing things right, you will have these ebbs and flows of where you'll be like, you'll feel a little stagnant or you might plateau or something like that. And then you, you get to have another breakthrough, right? You get to break through that. So, you know, it's super important to, to notice that. So I'm seeing some comments popping in here. Um, Nerlita is saying, I'm, I am in tears just hearing what you are saying now, feeling heavy and overwhelmed. Yeah. And so this is good, right? This is good that you are in tears. Okay. Um, cause that means something's coming to the surface. That means you are acknowledging your pain and that's super important. So, and from there you can start transforming. And so here's the thing is that it's all about a decision because those who are stuck are choosing to stay stuck. And they're deciding to, to stay stuck because their fears about what expansion looks like to them, whether it's just simply because it's unknown or, you know, and then they have issues around things that are unexpected or spontaneous or unknown, right? Which is, you know, a fear thing and, you know, needing to control stuff, right? Um, you know, it's one of those fears that I mentioned at the beginning of this broadcast and um, you get to have the courage to make a different choice because at the end of the day, that's what it's going to take. And because you chose to be in stuckness, for those of you who are, I'm not saying all of you are, right? But I'm just saying that if you are in stuckness and, you know, and sometimes if you feel like it, if you're an empowered light worker, you will, you will see how this coaching applies to you, even if you're not feeling in a truly stuck state. Like, you know, for instance, it could look like, okay, maybe I'm not completely stuck, right? Um, maybe I'm not full on stuck anymore, um, but maybe where can I tweak? Where can I be more, even more streamlined in my life? Where can I enhance my relationships with myself and others? Like, right, you know, there's always a new level you can expand into and you, there's always some, something you can apply to yourself. So you get to make a different decision. And that, my dear, is on you because no one can make a decision. People can recommend things. People can say, if you do this, you'll feel better. But if you don't actually make the decision, nothing will change, guaranteed. That's one thing I can guarantee is that if you don't do anything different, if you don't make a different choice, you are gonna stay stuck. You are gonna stay in that stagnation and that stuckness and that energetic, chronic, frozen shoulder, right? And um, that's really, really important. Beatrice, Christine is saying, courage, Dorothy, get me some. Oh, wait, I have to do that. Absolutely. Um, and she also says, I only recently realized I have been a false self for most of my life. Yeah, and, and that's part of the journey. That's a beautiful thing for you to share. Thank you for your vulnerability. Uh, for all of you who are really sharing from the heart, right? Because when you're really sharing from the heart and you're engaged with the dialogue about your power, you engage your power. You know, your power within is like, oh, she's talking about us. Yes. You know, maybe we're going to maybe we're going to be finally liberated. Right. So so that's super, super important. So I applaud you for those of you who are being super vulnerable right now and sharing how you're really feeling about this and being really genuine. Right. Because that's the only way you shift if 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 um, if you pretend and like, oh, yeah, everything is good. And that's like your life. Then. You know, it's not going to be like, um, you know, rocket science to kind of realize that then that's that's the level of what you're calling into your life. If you're just superficial about everything, you're going to be superficial in life, which means you're not going to really be happy, which means that you're not going to feel the depth of joy, the depth of love, the depth of pleasure. Right. That's not that, that ain't going to come until you choose you and you choose a different experience, because I'll tell you something. All the things you're afraid about, all the things that you love, these are all really, you know, yes, frequencies. And a lot of it is, is based on what you believe. A lot of it is based on what you believe. 
So it's super, it's super important to get really clear about what you're believing and then to assess, is it true? What I'm saying I believe that I've been believing since I was five, is that still true? Because if you're doing some personal inventory and you're realizing, oh, hell no, that ain't me anymore, right? Because a lot of times our techniques or our belief systems, our actions were based on survival mechanisms, you know? And, but then you grow up and then you realize it doesn't work for you anymore, usually because, um, you know, something is frustrating for you, right? Like then when you're frustrated by something, you know that it's, it's growing you, number one. And then also maybe it's not aligned, right? So some of these old actions may no longer be aligned for you. And so, um, again, it's really going to be um, up to you to make a different choice. And that's really what it comes down to when it comes to transforming from your stuckness into liberation and flow and freedom on your terms. It is going to require a different decision. It is going to require you choosing something else other than staying stuck. Um, essentially she is sharing, I know what I should be doing, but that fear of putting myself out there fully just keeps holding myself back. Yeah. That's one of the, um, the fears I mentioned earlier today, right? Like the fear of being visible connected to the fear of judgment. And here's the thing. One thing that I notice is that, um, is that a lot of light workers they'll be like you know a lot of it will have it connected to their family too right like um you know well my family might see this my ex might see this my childhood friends might see this and you know and so what so what you're gonna let an ex or a childhood friend dictate your life dictate whether or not you're gonna be going live or to do a video or to make a post and um, if that's really, really true, then you need to reassess your priorities. So putting that out there. Jennifer, hey there. She says, I had to be willing to get out of my own way and keep doing it day after day. Yes, that's what an empowered light worker does, people. They choose themselves every day. Every damn day, they are choosing themselves in every given moment. And I would say in every moment right because you know from like what you decide to have for breakfast if you have if you're a breakfast eater um what you're gonna what clothes you're gonna put on like you know um you know down into the other stuff like okay what what next step do i want to take my business into you know um every decision you make is either going to be aligned or not aligned and the empowered light workers will keep choosing to get out of their own way and they will keep choosing to do that every day. That's what they do. And again, not super sexy, not glamorous, but it fucking works. It just fucking works. And, um, and that's how you get change. That's how you shift your stuckness. You keep choosing the right decision. Not the most comfortable decision, because that is not an accurate criteria of light because growth is going to be as uncomfortable as fuck. And if you're doing it right, it will be scary. And so it's not going to be comfortable. And so, but that is totally of light. Growth and expansion is totally of light. So it being comfortable should not be the criteria of whether or not you do it. Because aligned things can scare the shit out of you. Okay. Uh, Mer Mom April shares, this is an awesome confirmation that the past few years of introspection of shame and pain are healing me in the right direction. Life is more joyful now. That's beautiful. And that's also a good criteria to see, you know, if you are feeling on the more joyful end and you're in the gratitude of things and you're cultivating love and your true power and feeling joyful with your life, then you're, you are headed in the right direction, right? Because your heart even in Chinese medicine, the heart is connected to the emotion of joy, right? And if you're connected with your heart and you're operating from your heart, right? And if, and the heart in Chinese medicine is very much connected, they say the root of it is in your tongue, meaning that your heart is connected to what you say and how you speak and 
what you're saying, right? And when you're truly in your joy, you are connected to your heart. And I'm talking about grounded, integrated joy, not the joy of like being totally out there and, you know, out in the ether, but not grounded, right? Like that's not really joyful, right? That's, that's not really joy, I'm saying. Um, but really being in the fullness of your joy, that comes from doing the work. That comes from clearing out the old stuff. That comes from, out from, you know, clearing the, the karmic uh, ties and all that goodness, right? So uh, I'm seeing another comment here. Is my soul knows it needs to be to focus on helping others, be the best version of themselves. But my mind says, how am I going to survive without money? Well, here's the thing: is that you know, as you know, I work with like workers who are spiritually conscious entrepreneurs. Meaning, you got a business, you have a business that is spiritually based, right? It's not that you just put good vibes out in the world and call it a day, right? Like that can only take you so far and that will not actually create the impact um, that you're really looking for. So um, if you are like the whole even saying surviving without money, that's a scarcity, that's coming from a scarcity mindset, right? It's that whole thing of like, there's not enough for me. There's not enough for everyone. If I take this, I'm taking from someone else because they can only have so much. We can only have so much, which is false. That is an illusion. The universe is abundant on all levels, including with money. And so my recommendation to you is to explore, um, you know, what are your belief systems around money? Because if like as many light workers do, which is keeping them in the old paradigm, if you're believing that money's evil or it's unspiritual or it's unspiritual to make money and you do all your stuff for free, then yeah, you're going to be wondering how you can survive without making money because you're going to be doing everything for free. That's not what we incarnated here to do is to just like have all this, you know, because it's also an energy exchange, right? Um, and just like giving and giving and giving. And first of all, not cultivating yourself, not cultivating your inner strengths so that you are literally a channel versus giving from your physical experience. Um, but then also, if you're just not even charging for it, then there is a misalignment there about um, somewhere you've got some like money stories that are holding you back, right? So that's something to explore more deeply. Blue Goddess Rock says, our time has value. Remember that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm seeing the visibility part for me comes from fear of rejection and abandonment still. A tough one, but it's true. Sure. But, you know, here's the thing. You know, I'm not going to go too deep into this, but the reality is that, you know, abandonment may have happened earlier on, right? But then it's up to you to stop perpetuating that abandonment of yourself. And so you get to stop abandoning yourself so that you can actually show up in the world because you are the number one person, you know, when you're five, when you're four, like you can't control certain things, right? But then once you become an adult, you can start choosing yourself. You can start choosing you. You can start stepping up for yourself. You can heal your shit and like just no longer be attached to whatever that perception is around, you know, I was abandoned and stuff. And also true, if you keep identifying with it, right, of like, oh, I'm just that person who gets rejected or I'm that person who's abandoned, right, then you're actually marrying that with your identity. And I wouldn't recommend that, you know, like maybe you're moving through some abandonment issues, but I wouldn't say that you are this abandoned being, right, because then you're literally creating that as your I am. You're actually stating that into the universe as this is my truth, right? So um, stop abandoning yourself and, and, um, and things should start changing. Okay. Some questions about purpose. Um, I'm not going to get into that because that's not the topic of this conversation. And someone's asking, what should I do if I have done something really bad in the past? How do I heal from that? Forgive yourself. Number one, sounds like you haven't, right? So forgive yourself for doing the death, for doing whatever nasty stuff you did, you know? We all did. And, you know, but do we all just are like, oh my God, I'm a terrible person, like forever? You can. 
You can keep flagellating yourself like until the cows come home if you want. Wouldn't recommend. Um, if you want to get out of that stuckness, then forgive yourself, first of all. You know? Just forgive yourself for being an asshole. <laughs> you know? We've all been there. Forgive yourself. Okay. Okay, I'm seeing a comment here. My soul is sad at the findings of how we were trespassed against by the government at birth. I'm realizing who I really am. Send me light. That's your job. That's your job to cultivate your own light, you know? And that's also not the purpose of this live too, right? Is to send people light because you as a sovereign being get to cultivate your own. And you get to cultivate that. You get to claim that instead of asking for it from others because then you're outsourcing yourself and your power. Okay. Uh, someone's saying, I love hearing that. I've been writing again, which seems to be awakening so much. Thank you for that confirmation. You're welcome. Modern Mystic is saying, what steps can we take to reconnect to heart and overcome invisibility? Well, um, so, well, one thing you do is you do a pattern interrupt. Okay, so once you start noticing, because also you'll need to create that awareness that you're doing this, right? But basically, if you, you're like in the head, so let's say you're kind of like getting stuck in the head and therefore you're not connecting with the heart, right? Like one way to approach this is you'll notice like, oh, I'm doing that thing again where I'm like coming from the head around this. And then just like have that awareness, number one, and then be like, okay, interrupting this now. What do I want right now? I don't want more of this right? I don't want to be like locked in here. I want to be more connected with my heart. So then you would consciously bring the energy down into your heart and let it hang out there for as long as possible and just really connect with the heart. And also, you know, even every morning, I would say, and if you desire every night as well, um, is to like really put your hands on your heart and ask your heart what it wants. You know, I, I mentioned, I've mentioned this, this uh, a lot because it, it works. It sounds really simplistic, but it works, okay? Where you're like, okay, now you're in your heart, and then like you put your hands on your heart, and you're like, okay, heart, what do you need from me today? Or right now, like however you want to say it, right? And your heart will respond. Even if you're not really used to doing this, eventually you will hear your heart, right? Like maybe not in that very moment when you first start out, but maybe like, you know, a few days um, later, you know, or but keep trying until you do. And just like really connect and because your, your heart will be very like, will be very like, here's how it is, right? It's not like emotional and like, oh my God, you've got to do this. This is terrible. You know, like it's not like that. The heart, your intuition is going to be like, here's what it is. It just is. Right? Like, so maybe your heart will be like, well, I'd like you to talk to me more, you know? So then next thing you do is that you talk to it more, right? From a place of genuine curiosity and desire to connect because your body will feel that if you are half asking it, if you really don't care to do it and you're just going through the motions, your body and your energy will notice that it will know that you're lying. <laughs> Basically, you're basically telling on yourself when you do that. So um, the heart exercise will, would be very helpful. And then in, in regards to overcoming invisibility, I mean, I've, I've talked about that at various lives and got in, into it into more detail. So I'm not going to go into it again in detail here. But I, would, I will say is that come from the heart, lead from the heart, you know, lead from the heart and don't make it about yourself. Because when you're making it about yourself, like, oh, well, I'm afraid to be out there. I'm afraid that, you know, someone may say something. I'm afraid someone's going to judge me. That is a very self-centered way to believe, right? That's a very self-centered uh, perspective. It's actually selfish because you're making it about you. And if you really have a light worker purpose that is huge and you've got a big purpose in the world and you're allowing that to get dimmed down because of your own selfishness around like, no, I don't want to, basically, right? then you are not fulfilling your calling. So that is um, one way you get to transform that is really instead of going into making it about you, make it about others. Make it about, you know, um, being in service, really. Being in service. 
So I hope that it's helpful. These are good questions, everyone. Good questions, good, good questions. So question here, what if everything I do is without clientele? How do we get out of scarcity when it's not coming up to having clients? Well, I'm not quite sure what your question is about because if you're doing energy work but you don't have clients, then either you're not charging for it and it's for free and you shouldn't be doing that. Um, you just shouldn't be. Like that's not like the that's not the way energy exchanges, right? Um, or you know, I'm actually not quite sure what your question is really related to. Um, but you know, for sure, if you're not charging for your services and you're in scarcity, you're in scarcity because you're not charging. So you need to charge for your services. And if you're not, and you've got issues around charging and you think it's gross or you think it's dirty or sleazy or, or all that, just realize that that is an old paradigm approach to money and it's not serving you. Um, Lena is saying, hi, thank you for this live, realizing that straggling uh, with absorbed energy and doubting my abilities. Yeah, so it sounds like um, straggling with absorbed energy. Well, it sounds like maybe you're taking on other people's energies and you're doubting your abilities because I've seen that happen a lot with a lot of light workers where they're just like, um, you know, they, they, they feel really confident, you know, they listen to their heart and they're feeling like super confident. And then like they go out into the world or they talk to a colleague or something like that. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, I don't feel so awesome anymore. Like maybe I'm not, you know, maybe I don't know what I'm doing, you know? And if that's the case, then you are allowing, again, it's that piece of allowing other people to, to dictate how you get to feel about yourself, right? Because the only person who has that power is you. And so um, make sure you're not giving your power away to others. Okay. <laughs> Beatrice is saying, good Lord, I have been doing that. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And like, look, you know, like a lot of this shit, I know I sound very like super hard ass and that's just my style. Okay. But like, no, this comes from love, you know? Um, and you know, because when you are really connected with your power and you know you want to share that kind of information with people who are wanting to transcend that for themselves you know and what i'm loving about your questions are you know they're they're very introspective you know they're very much like what's going on here in my heart and my body you know you're you're thinking and you're engaging and that's how you transcend things okay Regarding the topic of forgiveness for something bad in the past, I wanted to stay connected to something in that lifetime, but not the guilt part. So installed a strainer, instant help. I love it. Installed a strainer. That's how easy it can be, right? Like you just like install something. Like you have the power to remove things and to put things in, right? And like, you know, you can just literally like go back and if you enjoyed like a certain lifetime, I'm like, oh my God, that was amazing. And I'm like downloading the intel, like maybe you were an herbalist and you were a kick-ass herbalist, right? Like in a previous lifetime. And, but then, you know, you got sent to the stake because they thought you were a witch, right? Like you can strain that and you can, you know, um, you can, you know, create healing around that and you go, you, you do that inner work, right? So not going too deep into it, but yes, you have the power to feel how you want to feel about anything, about anything. You are the one who calls the shots on that. <laughs> Ashby is saying, you are coming with the honesty today. Yes, yes. And she says, as always, mm-hmm, okay. These are super great questions and observances. I'm also seeing Melinda on Facebook. She's saying, I feel stuck because I'm dealing with physical pain issues. I don't always know when it will get really bad. I know part of it is an energy block or stuck emotion. I haven't been able to remove it fully or move through it. And other energy workers haven't either. What I'm feeling around this, Melinda, is you're kind of attached to your stuckness. And that happens, you know, it's not like a judgment call. It happens, you know, um, but there's something there where, okay, so what I'm, it's, it's really like, it's part of your identity, right? So that's what I'm going to share with you is that it's, 
you're attached to it because now it's part of your identity. And so, you know, without it, who would you be? You know, is, is basically how it is. Like, who would you be without this trauma, this physical pain, right? Like, I mean, that's kind of like, it would be a different identity almost. So that's why the other energy workers weren't helping. It's not, I'm, I'm pretty sure they were effective at what they do. Um, but the reality is if you, if you want to stay stuck, you'll stay stuck, right? And if you're afraid to lose yourself because you're, you're afraid to lose your identity or a part of it and what that might mean for you, that's where you get to explore. So I hope that helps, Melinda. Yeah, Ashby is saying, just like other people, aka clients, can recognize when you're not genuinely interested in connecting. Yeah, super obvious. Give to ourselves as much as we give to the mission. Hello, people, please write that down. You know, I mean, super important, super important. Quantum love. I mean, gotta love that account name. Saying, uh, love the straight talking empowerment. You're welcome. You're welcome, folks. Okay. Um, and I get this question every single time from so, always someone new. Can I watch this live? Is there a replay? So yes, there's always a replay um, because on Instagram, um, it will be in the video section. If you swipe one, two, like I think two or three times, like two times, I guess you swipe and then you'll be like connected to all the videos and stuff. It'll be there. On Facebook, I have like a video page, video section. And you're welcome, Melinda. I'm glad that was helpful. Um, so, so yes, I, I'm loving, I'm loving these these questions, uh, comments about all of this, and um, I'm loving that you're super engaged on this because what's what is really happening is you're super engaged with yourself. Because when you're asking these kinds of questions, you want to shift, right? That's what that tells me is that you want to shift from whatever stuckness you're at, whether you're super stuck or maybe it's just a tweak, you know, it's like there's always more to expand on. And that's super, super important. So I'm going to leave you with a challenge as I always do. Since the topic is about, you know, feeling stuck as a light worker on your path, I my invitation to you is to pinpoint like the biggest place you're stuck on right now, like whatever you're stuck with, I'm sure, you know, the funny thing about humans, right? Like we, when, when we're like, what is, what are the things you're super, super grateful for or happy about? Like that takes a lot longer to get answers around versus what are you in pain with? Right? We are, you know, we are just like, here's my pain. <laughs> here's my pain. I know my pain very connectedly. Right. Um, but the challenge here is, what is the one area you feel stuck on the most? And what is your commitment to shifting that this week? Not in a month from now or next year or whenever you feel like it this week. Okay, so that is my recommendation for the challenge. And hey, Jen, good to see you here. I see Jen just popped in. And so actually we're kind of wrapping up on the live today. The topic today was here's how you, here's why you feel stuck as a light worker on your spiritual path. I covered why light workers are feeling stuck on their spiritual path, um, why this is coming up for many light workers right now, what's actually happening and what you get to do to transform it. And so a lot of, um, I gave some nuggets there, I, I'll say. And uh, I hope that was super helpful for you. I know that was super juicy and I always love going into the juiciness of things. And um, Anna saying amazing live, thank you, you're so welcome. And I'm so glad that you were all here taking out your uh, afternoon here in the East Coast or you know, maybe it's your morning or maybe it's your nighttime, but thank you for taking out the time to be here and engage with your power so that you can start rising up as a light worker. So, and this is something that you get to keep expanding on. And this week, may you open up into that. Much love, light, and power to you. And see you next week on, it's gonna be March, or excuse me, it's gonna be April. Um, April 4th. 
And so, yeah, and if any of this resonates for you and you're an empowered light worker who is connected to your purpose, um, and I mean your specific transformation that you provide in the world, not that you're a healer, not that you do yoga, right? Um, your specific transformation you provide in the world and you're a spiritually conscious entrepreneur and ready to up level and you want support around that, uh, DM me your powerful purpose as a light worker, and let's talk about how I can support you. Okay, so have a great week, everyone. Much love, light, and power.